Hello best learners, this is Mustafa here at Learn With The Best and we've got an awesome video for you today. We're going to be talking about the 28th law of power, enter action with boldness. And as usual, I'm going to define the law for you and then we'll be looking at a super juicy revenge story from the book. And then we'll finish up by analyzing how we can wield this law for extreme power in our own lives. <laughs> So here is the law. If you're unsure of a course of action, do not attempt it. Your doubts and hesitations will infect your execution. Timidity is dangerous. It's better to enter action with boldness. Any mistakes you commit through audacity are easily corrected with more audacity. Everyone admires the bold. No one honors the timid. Back in the year 1533, the king of Russia was on his deathbed and proclaimed his three-year-old son, Ivan, as his successor. He appointed his young wife, Helena, as queen regent until Ivan was old enough to rule on his own. The aristocracy, and namely the Boyar family, rejoiced with great joy because they knew that they could easily steal power away from this young queen and her three-year-old son. The young queen was aware of these dangers and so she called upon her trusted friend, Prince Obolensky, to help her in her rule. Unfortunately, after five years, the queen was poisoned by the Boyar clan and the Boyar princes seized control of the government and threw Obolensky in prison where he died of starvation. So now, at the young age of only eight years old, the young King Ivan was a despised orphan and anyone, including members from their very own Boyar clan who took an interest in the boy, were instantly banished or killed. So the young king roamed the palace, hungry, poorly clothed, and often hiding from the Boyar clan who treated him roughly whenever they saw him. On some days, they'd search him out, clothe him in royal robes, hand him a scepter, and set him up on the throne. A kind of a mock ritual in which they lampooned his royal highness, making fun of him. And then they would shoo him away after they had their laugh. Ivan had only one friend in the entire palace named Victor, and Victor was a member of the Boyar clan himself. Victor would console and advise the young king. However, on one day, several members of the clan horribly beat Victor and then had him banished after they found out that he'd been nurturing the young king. Throughout all of this madness, King Ivan maintained a complete silence, and this made the Boyar clan believe that the king was a completely terrified and obedient fool. Then on one fateful day, Ivan at the age of 13 years old requested that the prince of the Boyar clan come to his room. When the prince arrived, he found the room full with palace guards. King Ivan would finally have his revenge. He simply pointed his finger at the Boyer Prince, ordered the guards to arrest him, have him killed, and have his body thrown to the bloodhounds in the royal kennel. Over the next few days, Ivan had all of the Boyer clan members who were close to the prince arrested and banished. Caught off guard by his extreme boldness, the boyars now stood in mortal terror of the young man that they had believed to be a fool. The fool who had planned and waited for years to execute this one swift and bold act that would secure his power for decades to come. Understand, dear viewer, the world is full of boyars, people who despise and fear your ambition. They jealously guard their shrinking realms of power. You need to establish your authority and gain respect. But the moment that the boyars of the world sense your growing boldness, they will act to thwart you. This is the exact situation that the young king Ivan found himself in. So he laid low, showing neither ambition or discontent. He waited, biding his time. And when he was old enough, he brought the palace guards over to his side because the guards had come to hate the cruel Boyar clan. And once they agreed to the king's plan, he struck with the swiftness of a snake, pointing his finger at the Boyar prince and giving him absolutely no time to react. 
if you decide to negotiate with a boyer type, then you create opportunities for him. A small compromise becomes the crack in the mirror that he needs to tear you apart. A sudden bold move without discussion obliterates these cracks and builds your own authority. Now let's go over the six hard truths when it comes to boldness. But before we do that, I need your help with YouTube's algorithm. Please smash that thumbs up button below. Because if you don't, then unfortunately YouTube is simply not going to show this video to anyone else. Please also subscribe and click on the bell icon. Because if you don't, then again, YouTube won't let you know when a new video is uploaded. If you want to transform yourself from a lamb to a lion, then check out my course pinned in the top comment comment below. I will give you the tools that you need for success, but you have to actually step up and put in the work on yourself. This course is not for everyone because the majority of the population are sheep, but for those very few of us who want to walk the path of a lion, this is the course for you. Now let's look at the six hard truths about being bold versus being timid. The bolder the lie, the better. We all have weaknesses and our efforts are never perfect, but entering action with boldness has the magical effect of hiding our deficiencies. Con artists know that the bolder the lie, the more convincing it becomes. The sheer audacity of the story makes it more credible, distracting attention from its inconsistencies. When putting together a con or entering any kind of negotiation, go further than you had planned. Ask for the sun and the stars and you will be surprised by how often you will get it. Hyenas circle the hesitant prey. People have a sixth sense for the weaknesses of others. If in a first encounter you demonstrate your willingness to compromise, back down or retreat, you bring out the hyena in others, even in people who are not necessarily bloodthirsty. Everything depends on perception and once you're seen as the kind of person who quickly goes on the defensive, who's willing to negotiate and be persuaded, you will be pushed around without mercy. Boldness strikes fear and fear creates authority. The bold move makes you seem larger and more powerful than you actually are. If it comes suddenly with the stealth and swiftness of a snake, it inspires that much more fear. By intimidating with a bold move, you establish a precedent, and in every subsequent encounter, people will be on the defensive. Going halfway with half a heart digs a deeper grave. If you enter an action with less than total confidence, you set up obstacles in your own path. When a problem arises, you will grow confused, seeing options where there are none and inadvertently creating even more problems. Retreating from the hunter, the timid hare scurries more easily into his snares. Hesitation creates gaps, boldness obliterates them. When you take time to think, to hem and to haw, you create a gap that allows others time to think as well. Your timidity infects people with awkward energy, eliciting embarrassment. Doubt springs up on all sides. Boldness destroys such gaps. The swiftness of the move and the energy of the action leave others no space to doubt and worry. In seduction, hesitation is fatal. It makes your victim conscious of your intentions. The bold move crowns seduction with triumph. It leaves no time for reflection. Audacity separates you from the herd. Boldness gives you presence and makes you seem larger than life. The timid fade away while the bold draw attention. Boldness gives you presence and makes you seem larger than life. The timid fade away while the bold draw attention. And what draws attention draws power. We cannot keep our eyes off of the audacious. We cannot wait to see their next bold move. So what can we surmise from these six hard truths? It's much better to be bold than to be timid. Even if you're unsure of yourself, if you enter into an action, do it with extreme confidence and any mistakes you make will be blunted. This isn't to say that you should be stupid about your choices. By all means, please be intelligent and at the same time, be cunning. Not all situations require bold action on your part. So read your particular situation and understand that you can use this law to your advantage as just one of 48 weapons in your vast arsenal. 
Thank you for watching this video and I hope that you learned something new. Please support me by simply subscribing, smashing that thumbs up button below and checking out my course pinned in the top comment below. Make sure that you are subscribed and make sure that bell icon is lit up so YouTube can let you know exactly when a new video is uploaded. And remember, you only retain about 10% of what you learned the first time around. So watch this video a few times through and then come back to it again and again in order to really understand and ingrain all of the material. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.